Hello and welcome to this video which will explain and demonstrate how to model steel angle members as crossarm elements in PLS Pole. This capability is available beginning with version 16.70 of PLS Pole. The analysis of angle members is a complex process, especially when the angles are subjected to combined axial and bending forces. This new feature provides the ability to enter the true properties of equal or unequal leg single angles and automates the calculation of the angle member capacities and stresses considering bending about the angle principal axes. Bending of single angles is complex because the geometric axes do not coincide with the principal axes. Often the loads are applied along the geometric axes but then must be transformed to the principal axes for the analysis. In this sketch, the geometric axes are denoted as the X and Y axes while the principal axes are de designated as the I and Z axes. The orientation of the geometric axes to the principal axes will vary based on the lengths and thicknesses of the angle legs. Now luckily all of this is taken into account by PLS pole in the calculations. The bending capacity of an angle cross arm is calculated based on three limit states. Yielding, sometimes referred to as a plastic moment, lateral torsional buckling, and local light buckling. PLS pole will automatically determine the bending forces on the angle cross arm members relative to the I and Z principal axes. The stresses in the angle are calculated at three different locations on the angle cross section, labeled as points 0, 1, and 2 in this figure. The stresses are then calculated at vari various intervals along the angle cross arm member to determine the point with the largest stress along the cross arm segment. So now, let's open the PLS Pole program to demonstrate how this feature works. To work with steel angle cross arms in PLS Pole, you must first enter the physical properties of the angles in the cross arms components library table. Here you will fill in the values for the required properties such as the cross section, weight, depth, width, length, etc. In the strength type check column, when you, select, you will select the calculated angle option from the pull down menu. Notice that the X and Y inertia columns are grayed out for angles because PLS Pole will calculate these values automatically. When selecting the calculated angle option, you will also see additional fields to the right which need to be filled in with information that is specific to angle members, such as leg lengths, thickness, and radius of gyration values. These are common values which can easily be found in standard documents or other reference materials. You will also need to enter what's called the beta W value, which is used in the lateral torsional buckling strength calculation. Beta W is a measure of the location of the angle shear center relative to the major principal axis, shown in this sketch as the I axis, and it may be positive or negative depending on the direction of bending. However, Beta W should always be entered in PLS pole as a positive value and the program will automatically determine the correct sign based on the bending of the angle for each load case. For equal leg angles, beta W is always zero because the I axis passes through the shear center. For unequal leg angles, beta W can be found in the ANSI AISC 360 standard for common U.S. steel shapes or in other steel angle reference documents for metric angles. Once the angles have been entered in the component library, you will attach them to the structure just as you would for a standard crossarm member. In this example, I've already entered an angle crossarm member for the static wire support arm at the top of the H-frame. The angle is entered in the geometry crossarm table just as you do for a normal crossarm. However, you will also need to define the beta angle for the crossarm. The beta angle determines the orientation of the legs of the angle crossarm relative to the axis which connects the member origin to the member end. The default beta angle is 270 degrees, which will place one leg of the angle horizontally and the other leg vertically pointing in the downward direction. The angle orientation will appear in the geometry view so you can view the orientation of the cross arm and make sure it is correct for your structure. If the orientation is not correct, you can go back to the cross arm connectivity table and change the beta angle as necessary. The connection options for the angle cross arms are the same as for any other cross arm, 
so you can choose the option which best describes the connections of the crossarm to the pole or other members. Now one important variable for the bending and axial compression calculations is the unbraced length of the crossarm. Crossarms may have multiple connection points along their length, like in this example where the angle crossarm has a connection to the left pole and a connection to the right pole. PLS pole will automatically divide an angle crossarm into segments based on the connection joints defined in the connectivity table, and the unbraced length will be the segment length. So for this example, the static crossarm will be divided into three segments, a short cantilever segment on the left end of the crossarm, a segment between the two poles, and another short cantilever segment on the right end of the crossarm. Once I have the angle crossarm built into my model, I can run the analysis. In the summary report, the results for the angle crossarms will be included with any other crossarms in the summary of crossarm usages section of the report. Now, of course, the information in the summary report is primarily just the percent usages of the different structure elements under various load cases. So to get more detailed information about the forces and capacities of the angle crossarms, we need to look at the analysis results report. In the analysis results report, we can find detailed output for the angle crossarms for each load case used in the analysis in the detailed angle crossarm usage section of the report. This section provides detailed information about the angle crossarm deflections, moments about the I and Z axes, axial and shear forces along the crossarm, unbraced lengths, stress ratios for axial and bending forces, maximum usage, and finally the point on the angle where the maximum usage occurs, either point 0, 1, or 2, which I showed earlier in the video. To the right of the main output, you can choose to display additional internally calculated values for the crossarm segments. These values can be displayed by navigating to the General Output Options dialog box and checking the Print Extended Diagnostic Output option. Now these values in the report include the calculated member axial and bending capacities along with some other variables used in the calculations. The axial and bending formulas used for the angle crossarm members are listed in section 3.3 of the PLS Pole Manual. These extended diagnostic values can be used to gain a better understanding of how the angle crossarm stress ratios are calculated for each crossarm in the model and to compare the single angle crossarm capacities to your own calculated capacities. Now we hope this new feature will be beneficial for structures you have which utilize single angle crossarms. For more information about our software, including additional videos and technical notes, please visit our website at www.powerlinesystems.com. For inquiries regarding our software, price quotations, technical support, or other information, please send us an email using the addresses shown on the screen. Thank you for watching and for your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead design.